Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Learning Lamb, and today I'm doing the dress book tag. This tag was created, I'm just going to spell the creator's name just in case I mispronounce it, but it's F-G-H-I Joy. I'm going to put her video on the down bar. I really enjoyed it, and I'm really excited to do this tag. Um, also, sorry if my angles have been really weird in my videos, it's just I'm getting used to sitting in this chair um, because it's my new desk chair. Um, and I've been sitting in my old one, so eventually I have to take that out of my room. But right now, I've switched over and my tripod, I'm just dealing with angles right now, and it's just not very flattering angles, so it's really bothering me when it comes to editing, so I need to fix that soon, but just don't mind me. I don't know if it's a really weird angle, because I don't know if like half my head's chopped off here, but whatever, let's just go with it. Number one is Little Black Dress, choose a classic novel you enjoy. And I pick Hetty Dorval by Ethel Wilson. I've read this for my contemporary Canadian fiction class in my third year of university, and I really enjoyed it. It's a book written in the 1940s, so I consider it classic, even though it's not like Pride and Prejudice old. But I really enjoyed it, and it's a Canadian book, and you know, always gotta love those Canadian classics. Number two is Go To Dress. What book is your go to book that you like to return to over and over? And I picked Dying to Know You by Aiden Chambers, my favorite. I absolutely adore this book and I derive so many things from this book, whether it be inspiration or just like a good book cuddle. Um, it's just something that I absolutely adore and I just love, love, love. Number three is a sweater dress. What book do you like to read curled up in a blanket in the fall and or winter? And I picked Winter Street by Ellen Hildebrand. This is her winter series. And basically this series surrounds the Quinn family and what they get up to during the holiday. There's been four books published. The fourth one was the last one and it was published this year. I've yet to read the fourth one, but I've read the first three and I read them every year right before Christmas. This year I'm going to be reading the fourth one um, on the weekend that's, you know, has Christmas Eve encapsulated in it. And I just love them. It's a holiday tradition for me. I'm going to be sad when they're not coming out next year, so I really hope she releases another Christmas book because... I really love her writing, um, I read a lot of her books, and I'm super excited to see what's going to happen in the fourth novel. Apparently it's really good, because one of you guys told me that, so I'm looking so forward to it. Four Pockets, What Book Surprised You? And I picked The Truth About the Harry Kubert Affair by Joel Dicker. This one I picked up on a total whim out of the bargain section, and I was really intrigued by the spine. I picked it up, read the back, and I was like, I'll give it a try, and it ended up being my favorite book of 2016. And I really enjoy this book so much. I really need to reread it this year. I just have, or next year. I just didn't have the time this year, but it was such a good book. When somebody says mystery books and they like rave about um, any mystery books, I'm like, guys, have you not heard of this one? It is so good. Like, I definitely recommend it. It's a long read and it looks intimidating, but you fly through it. Like, I read that in two to three days. Like, it was very fast. Number um, five is Plunging Neckline. What book intimidates you that you need to just plunge right into? And I picked any book in the um, Outlander series by Diana Gowaldon. I realize also, sorry, I'm talking so fast. I just realized that. Sorry about that. I know some of you hate that, but it's me. Like, that's me in a nutshell. Like, I just talk really fast. I try to slow it down for my videos. I really need to start. But any book in the series is very intimidating, especially the mass market paperback editions, which are all the editions I own. Um, so they make me really scared because like some are really, really good books in the series and then other ones have not been the best. This is the fifth book and I'm currently reading this one, my friend Alex, and apparently it doesn't get much faster than now. So it's really been hard for me to plunge myself into it and get it, not get it over with because I hate to say that about a book, but like get into it enough that I don't feel intimidated, if you know what I mean. Um, number eight, six is Summer Dress. What book is your favorite summer read? I picked any Sophie Kinsella book. Not only are they written in a very straightforward, fun way that's very beautifully written, but it also has some implicit messages in her books. And I like that because it's a mixture of fun, carefree, but also with this message that you can marinate on for a while. Number seven is Full Skirt You Love to Twirl In, What Book Drag You Around in Circles? For this question, I chose Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This book had me reeling. It was so good, and I just absolutely adored this book because I had not read very many thrill thrillers, especially um, general fiction thrillers, and it was so good and so intricate. Like, I didn't expect too much picking it up. Like, it was getting raved about, but I didn't know how addicted I would get. And it was another one, like the Harry Kubera, that I was glued to what I was doing and I couldn't stop. 
Um, number eight is confidence boosting dress. What book do you read to make you feel confident? And I picked Confucius, the first 10 books. I learned a lot about Confucianism. I always say it wrong. So it's just one of those words. I can never wrap my mouth like around saying it. Um, but I learned a lot about it. I took a lot of, um, Chinese history classes. Well, I took two of them, but in the last year specifically, we talked about intellectual traditions and a bulk of our course was talking about Confucius and all these teachings, um, in that. And I'm not describing very well at all. I don't know where my words are going, but it really interested me. And this is a book I started picking up just to read on my own because I really enjoy the sayings that come from it. I really enjoy just learning about it. It's something that I wasn't really exposed to before this class and has instantly intrigued me. And I really love when classes do that. And they put a spark under me to read up more about certain things. And this is definitely one of them. And that was one of my favorite classes I've taken in university. And I have a lot of quotes from it up on my bulletin board. And one of my favorite ones, like I have, one of my favorite ones is, I'm just gonna look back and read it, so just don't mind me. It's the master said, do not be concerned that you have no position. Be concerned that you have what it takes to merit a position. Do not be concerned that no one recognizes you. Seek that which is worthy of recognition. And that one really hits home for me because I do want to be a teacher and everybody's like, don't be a teacher, no, no, no. Jobs are hard. I'm not an idiot. I know that. I hate when people say that. It's like, I'm not stupid. How did I get through school if I'm stupid? Like, I know it's going to be a hard struggle. And that quote inspires me to keep moving. Like, I'm not a risk taker. And that's the risk I'm taking. That's a pretty good risk to take. And I just, oof. I hate that. Like, I know some people are not coming from a bad place, but it's like, I'm not stupid. Like, how are you just... I'll forge my own path, you forge yours, ta-ta, we'll meet in the end. So number nine, sorry, just like that really frustrated me, just bring me back to a conversation I had like a month ago, and it wasn't with a person being malicious, but it was just like, it just really bothered me, because I'm like, I'm not stupid, don't treat me like I'm stupid, you know? So now that I got that out of my way, number nine is what book features a beautiful dress in the cover, and I picked the one by Kira Cass. These books all have gorgeous covers, but this one especially... It's just super pretty and the dresses on these covers are like breathtaking. I love them. And yes, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the dress book tag. My best friend's texting me, so I must get to her and I'll see you guys later. Bye.